Good afternoon, everyone. Signs of the grand solar minimum, the unthinkable is now normal. These are apparently the coldest clouds ever recorded on Earth at the top of this typhoon near the Philippines at 164 degrees Fahrenheit, below zero. So high were these billowing above the stratosphere. It maxed out the 16-kilometer heights on the NASA satellite. And off the east coast of Africa, two cyclones in different hemispheres spinning in opposite directions. Mount Shasta could set the new world record for the largest snowfall ever recorded on our planet, 18 feet in four days. That's just occurring now. Switzerland bust all-time record snowfall levels. Summer snow in Australia. You're going to need the hoodies and the long sleeve t-shirts for all this cold. And maybe it'll start a discussion about this grand solar minimum because it is here. Limited edition December only Adapt 2030 merch. It's not CO2. It's not you. It is definitely the sun. Teespring.com forward slash Adapt 2030 and the links in the description box below. And if you're looking for a story that's going to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, this is it right here. Typhoon Kamuri passing over the Philippines just before it made landfall. Apparently the cloud tops, the coldest infrared brightness ever recorded on our planet, at 164.9 degrees Fahrenheit below zero was recorded. And notice that very strange right in the middle, it looks like a plume coming out of the center there. And this is coming off the VIIRS infrared imaging satellite maintained by the University of Wisconsin Madison. Noah picking it up here as well. That yellow striation, pretty interesting. But then let's take a look at it in a different cloud brightness. It looks like an erupting volcano coming out of the center there. This is such an unusual event. And then not only is it the coldest cloud tops, it actually broke through the stratosphere and the heights of these cloud tops couldn't even be measured because it actually broke through the highest measurements that NOAA have on these satellite data sets here at 16 kilometers above. This is literally off the charts in terms of how high clouds are moving into our atmosphere now. This is unprecedented bit deeper glimpse in here and as well you see the eye right in the middle of that typhoon there the black is the eye and billowing would be an understatement is this is space bound clouds and then another unusual phenomenon in our atmosphere here off the east coast of Africa red box there severe weather EU putting this together precipitable water now you'll notice the two storm systems there. What's most interesting is these cyclones are on different sides of the hemisphere. So one is going clockwise and the other is going counterclockwise. Very rare, but it seems like rare is becoming the norm these days. And I guess to add strangeness on top of strangeness, Mount Shasta could set the world record for the largest snowfall ever recorded on our planet. 18 feet in four days, still ongoing. This would break the 1959 record if it were to eclipse this. Still ongoing, and again, it's very close, so they're looking at a world record snowfall here. And then jumping over to France as well. Massive record-breaking snowfalls this early in the season, not normal. And it's the third time it's happened this year so far, along with Austria and Italy getting snow in Spain this early. That's truly unprecedented what's happening here. New York digging out right now, Albany, and the foot plus of snow. Take a look at the Brooklyn Bridge, all those amazing photos that are out across the net right now. And then amazingly, look at this, Ice Age Farmer putting out Switzerland busts its all-time November snow record, 1959. Where'd you see that date before? Oh yeah, the Shasta story I just told you about, 1959. Are we repeating a cycle? Because it seems like there's a lot of snow and a lot of activity that's going back decades and decades. If it is, it's a cycle. It's not CO2, it's not you, it is the sun. Solar activity, or lack thereof, driving cycles. This grand solar minimum, for real, 
There's a lot of channels out there and people saying, oh, no, it's stable. Don't worry about it. It's going to be the same solar cycle as last time, same intensity. Go back to work, pay your taxes. It's all good. But with many in astrophysicists screaming at the top of their lungs like we are dropping off in activity and this is going to affect our global agriculture. I wonder what this push is about stability. It's got to be so stable. And there's an enormous amount of people talking about how stable it's going to be. Trying to reassure you it's going to be so stable. And adding to the signs, summer snow, Australia, it is the second day of summer, officially in Australia. Snow blanketing areas across New South Wales, Victoria, and Tasmania. It is not a single mountain range where it could snow at any time, according to the Australian media. Three massively disconnected areas, even by a water body from Tasmania all the way over to Victoria, and it's still snowing everywhere in that south part of Australia. That is really interesting. Look how deep it is here. Aussie ski resorts talking about large accumulations well over a foot. Summer snow berries southeast Australia. And the tweet says it all. Impossible file. Looking at at least a foot of snow. So those of you in the States, 30 centimeters is a foot in the second day of summer. Multiple locations Victoria, what about all the experts in Australia saying snow would be a thing of the past and our most famous Al Gore telling us snow would be a thing of the past except New South Wales blanketed in white after heavy summer snowfall. Look at the depths on these ATVs here. And also down in Hobart, down in Tasmania, affectionately Tassie. Chilly summer days to stick around Mount Wellington snow. Oh, you mean it's below freezing for several days in a row and keep getting colder and colder. Look into Tuesday there at minus 5. That's about mm, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And very few people are talking about the grand solar minimum, which is the real threat to our crops. And how do you think those leaves are doing up in Falls Creek after they already come out for the summer? Now they're getting refrozen again. And how do you think global agriculture is handling this year after it was out and then frozen again? Oh, we're seeing the repercussions. Low yields low protein content, losses everywhere across our planet, out of season weather, blanketed ski fields in the alpine regions, and look at the vegetative leaf cover smothered in snow. So how prepared are you for emergencies as we move into the intensification of the grand solar minimum? My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030, the two-week grab-and-go food crate or the four-week food supply, water filtration, emergency power, everything in one stop right there. My Patriot Supply, the link's in the description box below, along with the new Adapt 2030 merch, and I will see you next video.